Hey guys and welcome to another video. The good old Pentium 4, you either love it or you hate it. Me personally, I have good memories and we haven't done a video with the Pentium 4 in a long time. So why not see how it does in 2020? We will go over the parts. There are some games and benchmarks that we will be looking at, but of course also a subjective feedback how is this machine accessing the internet, installing software, and what about things like YouTube? The Pentium 4 is also a popular choice building a retro gaming machine, so we will install Windows XP with slightly different components and have a quick look at the performance. And here we have the Intel Pentium 4 641. This is a single core processor, but we have two threads thanks to hyper threading. It runs at 3.2 gigahertz, and this is pretty much the last revision with the Zetamil core. And thanks to that, it is compatible with Windows 10 64-bit. And this is the main board we're using. I have quite a few LGA775 main boards, but many of them are not compatible with the Pentium 4. This one is, I'll check the support page on the Gigabyte website. It's the GAP43T ES3G, and this one supports DDR3 memory. It has a PCI Express 16X and 1X, 5 PCI slots, nice legacy features with floppy and IDE, 4 DDR3 memory slots, here's the chipset, and we also have 6 SATA ports, these are SATA 2. At the back we have 2 PS2, serial, parallel, this one is Quaxel digital audio out, analog audio out, gigabit ethernet, and 6 USB 2 ports. So I had some issues. I tried flashing the latest BIOS and the machine just wouldn't post anymore. It would uh, power on, turn off, power on, turn off, and yeah, would do that indefinitely. And it turns out there's something wrong with the latest BIOS version. It's much more modern in terms of the date. I think it's two years newer than the second uh, latest one. Uh, luckily, this one has two BIOS chips, and by holding down the power and reset button at the same time, you can trigger a BIOS recovery, so to speak. So I downloaded the second latest BIOS, flashed that, and everything worked just fine. The video card is total overkill for the Pen M4, but I wanted to make sure we have something substantial and also something that can accelerate video playback. So this is the uh, Radeon RX 580 with 8 gigabytes of video memory. The main board supports four 4 gigabyte RAM modules for a total capacity of 16 gigabytes. However, at times the machine wouldn't post. Maybe it's just too many RAM modules, I'm not quite sure. So in some footage you will see 16 gigabytes, in some footage 8 gigabytes. In terms of performance, it shouldn't make too much of a difference. But I wanted to have lots of RAM for the Pentium 4 to give it at least a fighting chance. Talking about giving the Pentium 4 a fighting chance, there's nothing better you can do to an old computer than give it a SSD. So we have a Western Digital Blue with 500 gigabytes. And although the main board is only SATA 2, you get really fast access time and much, much better performance compared to a mechanical hard drive. So, yep, even for the Pentium 4, go with an SSD to give it a bit of a chance. This is the CPU cooler we're using. It's an Intel boxed cooler with a copper core and yeah, temperatures were just fine. The fan speed sits around just over 2000 RPM and the temperatures are sitting in the 40s and it's quite warm here in Australia at the moment. So cooling was not an issue. So installing Windows 10, you do it like any other computer. You create a USB flash drive and then press F11 to boot from it and yeah, I had no issues. The installation process was fairly straightforward. It also didn't take too long, but where things started to become a lot slower was after installing my Wi-Fi card and connecting to the network and then running Windows Update. The processor sits at 100% and with a single core and two threads, there's not much performance and the update took 
hours and there's not much you can do in the meantime multitasking is just not possible the machine is loaded 100 percent so windows updates is unfortunately something uh, that takes a really really long time on this machine after windows update i installed drivers and some games and as long as you do just a single task it's not too bad the machine never became unresponsive um, the installation does take quite a while for example installing the amd graphics driver takes a lot longer than on a modern machine but it never froze or it never became unresponsive and uh, yeah you just have to do one task at a time now let's take a closer look at the performance we have cinebench in r15 we're getting 41 and wow that's the slowest result i think i've ever benchmarked 41 and cinebench r20 i'm uh, surprised it even runs it uh, we're getting a cinebench score of 70 so Again, the lowest score I've seen, um, but I'm still surprised that it even runs all this software. Uh, but yeah, compared to any budget modern CPU, it just shows you how outdated this architecture is. Let's have a look at some benchmarks that take advantage of the video card. In iStorm, 19,459. CloudGate, 2060. In Skydiver, 3,734. In Night Raid, we're getting a score of zero because the CPU score, yeah, is zero, but we're getting a graphics score of 12,163. And in Firestrike, 1,519 points. Gaming performance was quite bad. So here we have Dirt 3 at 1080p with ultra low details and it's not a good experience. Now Dirt 3 is quite an old game. I usually check it out on every machine because I'm very familiar with it and I really like it. But the Pentium 4 can't really run it. And what was even more uh, disappointing was when I ran Half-Life 2. Uh, so I installed Steam and downloaded the game and we're getting less than 60 fps half-life 2 is a really old game but this is the updated steam version which is a little bit more demanding so we're running a 1080p with 4x anti-aliasing and 16x anisotropic filtering and it just does not run really well so gaming on this machine even older games are not a good experience now what about youtube here we're checking out a 60 fps video from our channel and on the normal youtube page not in full screen it struggles even at 720p 60 it drops frames uh, it is really only smooth and playable at 480p and then i thought well why not install windows xp and see how it does as a retro gaming pc the operating system is a lot more suitable it installed a lot faster straight out of the box I'm using the easy to boot project because it lets me install Windows XP off a USB flash drive and it has, it has all the AHCI SATA drivers already integrated and that was uh, pretty straightforward. Next is the uh, snappy driver installer origin which detects all the components and installs the drivers automatically. I just uh, install the drivers for the video card and for the sound card separately. For graphics, we're using a Radeon HD 7770 with 1GB of VRAM. And for sound, the Creative Labs Sound Blaster X5 Titanium with PCI Express interface. I wanted to check Half-Life 2 under Windows XP and sure enough, it does run a little bit better. So the Half-Life 2 version from Steam is DRM free. Just copy the folder uh, onto your retro gaming PC. You don't need to be connected to the internet. It just works. And yeah, it seems that the Windows 10 overhead, maybe the drivers, uh, just makes Half-Life 2 run really poor under Windows 10. Under Windows XP, it's not a super silky smooth experience either, but it runs a lot better. And there's one more test that we need to carry out. Can the Pentium 4 run Crisis? So this is a 1080p with the lowest details and it runs not well, but it does run. So guys, the takeaway is that this is not something to recommend. However, I was still surprised just by the fact that the Pentium 4 can still run Windows 10 and modern software without any issues. So it still has the necessary CPU instructions for most software out there. Performance, yep, yeah, um, this is not a powerhouse, uh, more a fun experiment. Where I see the Pentium 4 really shining is with retro gaming. 
Having said that, with such a platform, don't go with a Pentium 4, even for retro gaming, go with a Core 2 uh, Duo, you will get much, much better performance. But if you have a soft spot for the Pentium 4, like I do, then yep, this is a nice little system. It doesn't consume too much. This is a 65 watt version of the Pentium 4. And you can get faster versions of this CPU running at 3.4 and 3.6 gigahertz. And then some of these games will suddenly run at 60 FPS uh, most of the time. So yeah, also for Windows XP, I did change the RAM to two two gigabyte modules and that also worked without any issues. So the takeaway is this is more for fun and not something practical and uh, some general rules apply. If you have an old system, give it a lot of memory, give it a SSD to give it yeah a bit of a, a chance to fight modern software. But with a single core processor and two threads, there's only so much you can do. And the IPC on the Pentium 4 is also quite poor. But yeah, it is what it is. Let me know what do you think of the Pentium 4. Uh, do you love it? Do you hate it? Share your comments down below. I read all of them. Um, if you haven't subscribed to the channel, please do so. Give it a thumbs up and share the video with your friends. And let me know what else you want to see. And yeah, I shall see you soon with another one.